Christiana, I work at Master of Law and I'm here today with my colleague Abby at the glorious Reynolds Retreat here in Kent um, to chat through kind of how to choose your next whisky. Um, maybe you're new to whisky, maybe you've tasted a few things, maybe you just want to try something new, but this is about where to go next and stuff that you maybe haven't tried. Yeah, I think there's a lot of whisky out there and sometimes you're a bit spoilt for choice. Um, so it can be a bit difficult if you're new to whisky, like you say, um, you don't really know where to start. So hopefully this video is going to kind of help point you in the right direction of something that you might like. Yeah, for sure. And whisky is obviously a completely broad church. We've got six bottles here, but there are hundreds, there are thousands, there are so many different styles from all around the world. And yeah, we're going to chat you through just a handful of them. So blended scotch can sometimes be looked down upon a little bit. But I think brands like Compass Box, which we've got an example of here, they make blended scotch, they make blended malts, they do single grain, they do kind of everything. And this bottle right here is an incredible example of a blended scotch that you might not have tried that is absolutely delicious. Yeah, I think, again, you're right there saying some people kind of look down their nose at, at blended whiskies and they, they will only kind of buy a single malt. Actually, I, th I feel like you're missing a lot of fantastic whiskies if mm -hmm. you do that. Um, you know, people like Compass Box are really experimental and they do some really cool um, different kind of expressions that you can you can get and this is a great example of that. Yeah for sure, so this one here, this little Great King Street blend, um, it is a blended scotch, it's not a blended malt. Blended malts are where you've got um, just whiskies from different single malt distilleries together with no grain. This has got some grain in it as well. Um, it's just full of flavour and it's an absolute delight and it's an easy sipping whisky in the best possible way. Wonderful. Um, and yeah, I think just give it a go, look it up, get involved, especially if you're brand new to whisky or you've maybe dabbled a little bit and you just want to try something new. So that's our blended whiskies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably about time to talk about single malt. I, I agree, yeah. Single malt scotch is obviously an enormous category these days in terms of the coverage it gets and how people talk about it. Even though blended scotch still makes up a massive chunk of the market, mm -hmm. single malts are, you know, it's what people are really excited about. It's where us whiskey geeks kind of yeah. find a natural home, so to speak. And we've got a Glen Farkless 15 year old right here. Amazing. So yeah, this Glen Farkless, um, you're typically going to get from those sherry casks, you're going to get some like deep red fruit flavours. Think of things like raisins, think of stewed fruits, um, cherries. You know, this is kind of where, where I sit. This is my sort of favourite type of whiskey. Um, I love a sherry cask whiskey. Yeah, and even me, I have a much more kind of savoury lead palette. Um, stuff like Glen Farkless I love. I mean, along with those like yeah. big fruit notes, you get some like really kind of drying spices coming through from the mm. sherry as well which makes it an absolute delight and obviously there are you know hundreds of distilleries that make single malt these days not even just in Scotland all around the world and it really is quite an interesting subcategory to explore because yeah. you do get those distillery characteristics coming through um, and also single malt is just one of five categories of scotch as well um, so obviously you have single grain as well um, single malt being made from malted barley single grain being made from another grain uh, so something like rye or wheat Yep, and they're all at one distillery. So what you've got with your blends, liquid maybe from all over the place, for these, if you've got the word single, it's just from one place. So yeah. that's where you get all that luscious, delicious character. Exactly. Cool, so that's Scotland done for now. For now. Because, you know, whiskey can be made anywhere in the world these days. Scotland does not have the monopoly on good whiskey. Which Absolutely. Is very exciting, especially when you come to this bottle here. Yeah, so here we've got a Woodford Reserve. Um, this is a beautiful Kentucky straight bourbon. Um, I'm trying to think of flavours of this, you know, you're going to get lots of oak spice, lots of, um, you do get those cherry notes on top, um, and I think this is kind of a really smooth, beautiful whiskey. Yeah, so you might think you know bourbon, there are obviously some enormous big bourbon mm. brands out there, um, some you might mix with Coke, some you might have neat, but I really would encourage you to explore distilleries like Woodford, um, mm. there's quite a progressive approach to whiskey making. Yeah. This one here is a bourbon, so bourbon by definition has to have at least 51% corn in it, there are other rules as well, but that for me is like the main one in terms of flavour. Um, but Woodford, yeah, does all kinds of things, yeah. they make single malts, they do, yeah, all kinds of experimentation. Um, but as a bourbon, this is a great one to try, especially if you know, you maybe you've tried some of the bigger names and you're not sure where to go next. Yeah, and the corn kind of gives you that buttery sort of mouthfeel and taste as well, which is really kind of quite unique to American whiskey and bourbon in particular. If you like sweet corn and those kind of notes, that's a good place to land. Um, but yeah, obviously, we've done Scotland, we've done the US. Ireland is traditionally another sort of significant whiskey maker and 
Yep, again, there are, there's one big brand I can think of that you might, might spring to mind if you think of Irish whiskey, which is fantastic. But there's a whole load more out there now. There's mm. been an incredible distilling boom in Ireland. Yeah. There are new distilleries springing up all the time. The last time I checked, I think we'd gone from like three to four to 27, 28. Yeah. It's incredibly exciting. Just absolutely exploded, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think something really interesting about Irish whiskey is that typically with scotch, um, they'll distill it twice. Um, whereas with Irish whiskey, typically they'll distill it three times. So I think that kind of gives it a bit more of a um, softer kind of notes. I think it kind of makes it a bit smoother as well sometimes. Yeah, 100%. So again, we talked about this being a great entry point. Check out Irish whiskey as well yeah. if you're quite new to the game. This one here is from the Teeling Whiskey Company, um, which is one of these kind of new wave distillers. They've been around for a little while now. They're making some absolutely delicious stuff. And yeah, small batch Teeling, can't mm. go wrong. Yeah, definitely check them out. Brilliant. Um, but, so we've covered kind of the big main whiskey markets yep. now. We talked about a distilling boom in Ireland. That has now travelled the entire world. You've got distilleries pretty much every country you can think of. Mm -hmm. Australia, France, South Africa, everywhere. And this one right here is Mac by McNair, which is a very exciting Swedish distillery. Yeah, so I've not tried Mac uh, or anything actually from McMyra. Um, so explain to me kind of what, what kind of things would I expect from these guys? Sure, so McMyra are very exciting. In fact, it's not really one distillery now, they've got two. They do yep. all kinds of experiments um, and you get a whole different bunch of stuff coming out. So this is just one expression, which for me is like really quite fruit forward, orchard fruits, um, some caramel notes in there too. It's definitely for me at the sweeter end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious, but they also make some peated malts as well. Wow. Um, yeah, check out their portfolio because there's so much good stuff coming out of Sweden right now. Mm. And that's the same for every, you know, countries all over the world. You've got Bren from France, you've got Kiro yeah. from Finland. Don't just limit yourselves to sort of the more traditional whiskey producing nations because mm -hmm. there's goodness everywhere. Absolutely. So that brings us on to um, this Ardbeg 10 year old, which is from the island of Isla. So Isla is typically known for those really big, rich, peaty notes. Um, you know, smoke flavours, um, spiciness, it's, it's really quite unique, um, but some fantastic stuff going on over there. Yeah, smoke, iodine, peat, um, not exclusively, you can get some unpeated Isla expressions, but if you think you, you've maybe dabbled in some of the peat, or you know, that you like the earthiness, for me, a, a lot of the Isla expressions mm. do really appeal to my more savoury lead palette. Definitely check out Ardbeg. It's got a huge following. There are whiskey geeks in there, thousands if not millions that absolutely yeah. adore Ardbeg. And it's, yeah, it's a great one to try. And the best thing about, well, shopping at Master of Mall, obviously biased, is that most of these whiskies here, in fact, all of them except for the Ardbeg, are available in 30 mil dram format. Yeah, absolutely right. So it's really cool to kind of try different expressions. Um, you know, if you're not too sure about something, instead of buying a full bottle, you can just buy yourself a 30 mil dram, um, yeah. give yourself a glass, See what you think, you know, and then, you know, if you, if you do hate it, then you haven't spent out all that money on a single bottle. And if you love it, then you know you can go back and buy a full bottle of it later. Yeah, 100%. I mean, all of these whiskies here are around the 35 to 55 pound price bracket, um, which means that they are kind of at the more affordable end, but they're all massive bang for buck flavour. Mm. But at the same time, if you're spending 50 pounds on a bottle of whiskey and it's not your favourite thing in the world, this is where the drams come in. So yeah, yeah check absolutely. them out, make your own tasting set, get involved and yeah. have fun exploring. Awesome, thanks very much. Cheers.